Today we are going to install a few libraries that will help us with the React JS development. So earlier in our videos we had installed one of uh, the extensions. I'm going to show you again. So that extension is named Prettier and we have been using it from uh, a few days. So this is the code uh, this is the code extension that we are going to install. You can also read the documentation and all the shortcuts that you will receive with this code extension so that you can save time and you can work very easily with all of these. So you can see there are keyboard shortcuts where you can read one more extension that we have installed is the ES7. So we already have that installed. Okay, so this one, you can see we have it installed. Uh, we did the installation in the last previous videos. You just have to click on install. And there are so many code snippets that we are we have been using from the last few days, like RFCE and RCE. So all these are the shortcuts that help us work better in our project. N Today we are going to install an, an extension named Slint. This is a very useful extension and so we are going to install this and so you can see there are a lot of documentations and you can uh, read about this. So that's it. It's just installed and then you can use it. Slint is, uh, it analyzes our code and it tells us the problem. It is present in most of the editors, but uh, we just have to install the extension. So that is the thing. And Prettier, so I will talk about Prettier code form formatter, which is compatible with most of the languages. And it saves a lot of time it uh, specially indents our code on the save and it is very good in vs code it works very well with vs code now what we are going to do uh, is today we are going to just design our folder structure a little bit so that we can work with it easily as we have created a components folder you can see we have a login.js, login.css and the background image is stored itself inside the component folder. So if we have a better component uh, folder structure, we are going to face less issues and uh, our code will be very organized. So for that we are going to, so the app.js is our main parent function functional component so we will just keep it as it is and we are going to edit some of our code so yesterday we did all our work in app.js today we are not going to do that we are going to restore everything to what it was earlier and we are going to change the login.js component that is our login component that is this component is inside login.js so we will do nothing, we will just remove the code from app.js and we are going to paste it inside login.js. So this is our code which we have pasted inside login.js and everything remains same. Also another thing, uh, whatever we have written inside app.css, we are going to copy that completely and we are going to paste it inside our login.css so the same code everything is same after this what we are going to do is we are saving both these files remember it is inside the source folder I have created another components folder inside this I have login.js and login.css we are going to create all our components inside this folder Later on, we can create an asset folders in which we will store all our uh, assets like uh, 
background image uh, maybe audio video you can add all these inside the assets folder now also we will not need some of this file so let us just delete them like so this is what we are going to need in our project that's it uh, now for the app.css app.js is completely empty right now so let's restore to what it was earlier so we will use our code snippet rfce which is a part of our extension that we have installed right now and you can see react functional export component and you can also see uh, if i hover creates a react functional component with es7 module system so we have installed our es7 that helps us with all these code snippets so everything is done after i just click on enter now what we are going to do is we are just going to restore everything so our component will be named app we will export default app and inside app we are going to use our login.js that is this file so like we did in our react projects we are just going to import it here so the component is login and we will import it here also so import login from so our login is present inside source folder inside components and inside that so we will write components and login so you can see it gives me the option so this is done and inside login we have also imported login.css this contains the exact same code that we had in app.css later on we are going to edit all this code so don't worry about this so there are a lot of things that you have to think while you are working on a project so now if we hit save you can see i get the same output let us do something more let us add a p tag inside our uh, app.css so inside form i am going to insert the p tag which says so you can see i am getting an error i am getting red lines all over from where the form tag is starting to where it's ending because i am doing something wrong this is happening because we have installed our code extensions this tell us that we are going to that we are creating an error and let me just do it again and show you how you can so if i hover you can see something is written so if you read that you will get an idea of what you are doing wrong so you can see jsx expression must have one parent element and we are breaking that rule so we are getting that red lines so we have to insert it here inside our form tag and we are going to say i agree to the terms and conditions conditions of the website and you can read our privacy policies and cookies now if i hit save and i save all these files you can see we get the p tag below you can also style that p tag let us go ahead and style the p tag so for targeting the p we have it inside it is inside this div tag login form and inside form we have the p so first we are writing login underscore underscore form inside that we are entering the form and then we are targeting our p tag let's give it a font size of 12 pixels so that it looks cleaner so you can see it becomes a little clean and let us give it a padding a little bit and a margin so i want to give it a margin top of 
of 5 pixels and also margin bottom of 5, 5 pixels. So now it looks a little bit cleaner and it is aligning with all of our L other elements. Okay, so now what we are going to do is we are going to push all this code inside our version control system that is git and github. So, so we are just going to open our location where we have created our react project. So I am inside my docon folder. So I will go inside this and then I am going to do right click show more options and git bash here. So yesterday I already pushed some code inside my github repository. So today I am just going to commit some changes which I have done. So for that let me just show okay. So now what we are going to do is we are going to uh, so already git is tracking all these files so for tracking all those files you need to run the command git add and the name of your file if you want to add all your files uh, that is present inside this folder so you will have to uh, write dot slash and then git is going to add all your files so you can run the command and then see let me just run git status to see what is the status of my branch so you can see i have modified package log.json package.json and i have deleted some of the files so for the uh, folder setup and also it has an untracked file that is slint trc.json that we use that we that was created while using slint uh, code extension so now what we are going to do is we are going to git add whatever files i have i'm just going to add those so now let me see git status so you can see that there i have add all these files to the staging area but i have not committed all these changes that is i still have to commit these changes you can see uh, there are some options you can see you always have to read like it is telling if i want to go back to what i was like if i do not want to modify all these files then i can always use the command git restore now after adding i want to commit all these changes so i am going to run the command git commit and i will just pass a message by saying dash m and i will say second commit or let us say a folder structure setup and now i'm going to hit enter so now you can see i have changed nine files there are some uh, insertions some deletions so this is what we do now git has a screenshot or a snapshot of all my files in the present state now to push this in uh, inside my github i am going to run the command git push dash u into my origin and now if I hit enter then you will see that these files have been pushed to my github repository. Now if I show it to you so this is the github repository and let me refresh it. And you will see this file was not there but now this file is here so we have successfully pushed our today's code inside uh, our github repository it is very important to use a version control system like if i have done something wrong today then i can restore it from uh, git as git has a snapshot of as soon as i ran the command git commit then git took a snapshot of my uh, files and folders and if i want to go back to that stage i can always go back to that stage using git restore and 
there are a lot of commands where you can always uh, so git lets us manage and keep a track of our source code history if you are going to see your project which you are working on it now and if you see that code six months later you are not going to understand anything about that so for that it will be very useful to you 